King of Sports. New Japan Pro Wrestling. Twenty-four hours and counting to Resurgence live on pay-per-view on Fight TV, and you are locked in here on New Japan Strong. Hi, everybody. I'm Kevin Kelly. We're on the road to Summer Struggle. Kevin Kelly, Alex Kozlov on the call. Alex, three big matches. An opening contest tonight features Wheeler Yuta, our pal, one-on-one -on -one against Barrett Brown. Your pal, my pal, is Barrett Brown, and he's back on his winning days. And I can't wait to see what he's got in store for Wheeler Yuta. Quite a test in our second contest for Fred Yehai as he goes one-on-one -on -one against the young gun, Hikaleo. Fred Yehai, you know he's my favorite. He's something special, but I do not know if it was a smart decision to sign on for a match against Hikaleo. Our tag team main event, this is going to be a gem. How about this? Leo Rush and Carl Fredericks team up to take on Danny Limelight and the strong openweight champ, Filthy Tom Lawler. Team Filthy all the way and the best strut in the business. Tom Lawler is in the house, but how about this? West Coast Wrecking Crew is now a part of Team Filthy. What do they have in store for Carl Fredericks and Leo Rush? Let's see what happens. We'll head to the ring right now as Strong gets underway. It's certainly one you're going to be looking forward to, and afterward, we'll be talking about Wheeler Yuta one-on-one -on -one against that man, Barrett Brown, and Barrett Brown not alone. He's got Bateman with him. Wait, oh. wait a What is that? It's, what? it's Big Poppy Pump. It's Big Poppy Pump, and he's coming out with Bateman and Barry Brown. Kevin, I don't know what this means, but if this is gonna be a new thing, if Mr. Yoso has joined the team of Barry Brown or Bateman, this could be the very, the missing link that Bateman and Barry Brown need to have like a clear channel, clear channel for success here in New Japan Strong, Kevin. Well, Barrett Brown is getting set for competition, but I can't stop looking at Mysterioso, who's come out with Bateman and Barrett Brown. Look at these. He's all in black. Oh, yeah. Well, he's got yeah. a, a black mask on underneath the chainmail. I mean, there's no color. There's no flash. Well, there's... There's a reason why he wears a black shirt. There's a... You why, know, is, he, he why is that? He likes wearing a black shirt because it's an extension of the color of his heart. Biologically and metaphorically, he's got a black heart. Well, I don't know if Wheeler Yuta is prepared for this. Not only does he have to concentrate on Barrett Brown, but he's also going to have to keep an eye on both Mysterioso and Bateman on the outside. Not only will we have three great matches here on this episode of New Japan Strong, but we will, of course, be talking all about tomorrow night's extravaganza live on pay-per-view on Fight TV. 
its resurgence from the torch. The LA Coliseum fans in the Southern California area, there are still some great seats remaining. But for everyone else all around the world, you'll have the opportunity to see it live. We're available on Fight TV. And go to Fight TV right now. Check it out. Get all the information. The bell sounds. This is our opening contest. Wheeler Yuta, Fred Ye, hi. Alex, were very impressive during Tag Team Turbulence. It seemed that Fred brought out some fire from Wheeler Yuta that we hadn't seen previously. Will he be able to continue that here against Bear Brown? That's a good point. We've seen a more intense and focused Wheeler Yuta when he was tagging with uh, Fred Yehai. And right now, you know, both these men have an opportunity on tonight's episode to, to show what they've got in singles competition. Very much looking forward to our tag team main event as well with filthy Tom Lawler, the strong open weight champion, teaming with uh, Danny Limelight and Team Filthy against Leo Rush and Carl Fredericks as uh, some words of advice from Bateman on the outside and Mysterioso is out there as well. I'll tell you what, if Mysterioso has thrown in with the likes of Bateman and Barrett Brown, I agree with you completely that Mysterioso is going to greatly help them, but I certainly, oh, if this means there's going to be a change to the greatness of Big Poppy Pump, I would be so disappointed. Oh, this is going to be great. I think things are looking up for them. I mean, I love the fact that Big Poppy Pump is out here tonight. Did you know that legends, there's a legend that says that one of the reasons Mr. Yoso doesn't remove his mask much is because when he does, he has somewhat of a, in uh, what some in Mexico call the Medusa Efecto, turning a tourist family in Cabo to stone. And they're still there as statues, never to be forgotten. Well, maybe we'll visit that someday. The bow and arrow here by Wheeler Yuta. Barrett Brown flips over. Referee Nick Bonanno counts two. Barrett Brown out. So Barrett Brown's had a hard time getting going here against the multidiscipline star, Wheeler Yuta. Wheeler Yuta, you know, from Pennsylvania, six year a pro, trained by the likes of Drew Gulak, Mike Quackenbush, and Tracy Williams. You know, a great technical wrestler using a hybrid style of lucha and mat wrestling and has had experience wrestling in Japan. And the tackle puts Barrett Brown down. 50 caliber looking to fire at least something. Been shooting a lot of blanks so far. Standing switch. Oh, Wheeler Yuta faking Barrett Brown out. And the drop kick puts him down. Here's a cover and a kick out just at one. Barrett Brown's going to need to call a timeout, call for a retreat something to change what has been a slow start for him here on the road to summer struggle. Well, if you look at the pattern, you know, Barry Brown usually has a slow Ooh. start and he starts to get going and here Just we like go. That. The tides can turn so quickly when you're in there with Barry Brown. Double thrust into the throw. Oh. Of course, Barry Brown was uh, a man alone for quite some time in New Japan Pro Wrestling, had teamed with Adrian Quest. They found tag team success, but Barrett Brown was embittered that Adrian Quest was the one getting the victories in those tag team matches. So Barrett Brown made a bold decision, to say the least, and that was to sidle up next to Bateman. And since then, you cannot argue with the results. It's been nothing but victories for Barrett Brown. Well, you know, when Barrett Brown, when he's on his A game, and he has been, you know, lately, ever since his allegiance with Bateman, he's a very effective, hard-hitting wrestler. You know, he's gotten back on track to his winning days. You know, he, he's already defeated DKC and Adrian Quest, and along with Bateman, has defeated Fred Rosser and Adrian Quest. So he's doing good. Well, Barrett Brown was no slouch as he's grabbing the beard here doing anything it takes to win. Barrett Brown was tabbed by New Japan matchmakers as one of the first athletes to compete on New Japan Strong. One year, one week ago, this program debuted on New Japan World. And folks, we thank you for joining us each and every week. But Barrett along the way couldn't buy a win, couldn't catch a break. And I think he started to feel the pressure of, hey, listen, if I don't start winning, 
they're going to find somebody else who can. And that was where he started to press. And he's, he's pressing the offensive advantage here on Wheeler Yuta. Well, thank God he got out of that traumatic situation of being attacked him Cover. with the very self-involved Adrian Quest. I mean, anybody in that position would feel insufficient. Five and sure. Five he finally got out, and now look at Mr. Yoso in it, is in his corner. And you know with Mr. Yoso, when he cuts onions, onions cry. So the upside is huge with these. Just a blatant choke there. Wheeler Yuta missed the... Senton and the self-absorbed Adrian Quest. I can't let that one just lay there. Are you are you kidding me? No. I... Adrian Quest is one of the most selfless individuals I have ever met. Well, uh, Kevin, you know, uh, some can be slightly uh, uh, vulnerable to delusions, and I think that's what's going on with you in this case. Well, that's a nice way of saying I'm an idiot. Oh, Tilt a world backbreaker. Not to my face, anyway. Here he comes, Wheeler Yuta. Oh, and now Barrett Brown is the one doing the catching here. Oh, wow, look at that. suplexing Suplex. right back into the corner, dragging Barrett Brown, or Barrett Brown dragging him away to the center and a kick out at two. Get up, Yuta! Get up! Barrett Brown is gearing up for something here. Oh! Well, with no help from the outside, Bear Brown's going to win this one. No! He doesn't... Wheeler, Yuta, kicking out a two. Kevin, he doesn't need any help from the outside. They're just there to show him support. They don't actually need to get involved. And obviously, the game plan here for Yuta is going to have to be to stay focused on the real threat in that ring, and that's Bear Brown. He doesn't need well, to Bateman... worry about Mysterioso yeah. or Bateman. Neither, There's a referee Neither Bateman there. nor Mysterioso have gotten involved. Absolutely right. Here we go! Oh. Swan time, nobody home. And now Wheeler Yuta. Roll him up, shoulders down, and a near fall. I thought that was it. Yeah, that was a, a tight pin. Beautiful and Zaguri by Wheeler Yuta. Look at that snappy German suplex. Two. Maintains the waist lock. And now gonna go for the submission. Oh no. He's got him locked in in the middle of that ring. But he lets go for whatever reason. Come on. He doesn't need to worry about it. There's a referee in the ring. Oh, come Wait a on minute. Now. I don't know what happened, but Wheeler Yuta seems to have collapsed. Are you kidding me? Mysterioso 2. It's over. Uh, it, it appears as though Wheeler Yuta may have taken Nine, some damage seven, earlier, and, one, and he nine, collapsed seven, in the middle of that ring. He, and Bear Brown yeah. took advantage, yeah. rolled him up for the three. Oh, uh, Kevin, there's a referee in the ring fully capable of keeping everybody away that doesn't belong in the ring. And Once again, you're aware of the match. The referee is raising Bear Brown's hand because he clearly earned that victory. Well, he got the victory. Earn is a relative term. And certainly everybody watching New Japan Strong saw exactly what happened. But the result is the result, and that is Barrett Brown gets the victory to kick us off here on New Japan Strong Resurgence tomorrow night on pay-per-view. There are few athletes in the world of professional wrestling that combine the size and the intensity quite like Hikaleo. With the championship bloodlines, the youngest son of Haku, the brother of the Gorillas of Destiny, Hikaleo is destined for championship greatness. No doubt. And we'll about see it. what happens. We'll see what happens in this second match. Hikaleo! Only five years a pro. At six foot eight, 264 pounds, with wins over Fred Rosser and Brody King, this man has unlimited potential. And there are matchups from time to time. Sometimes we have very even contests in terms of height and weight. This is one where the measurables are off the charts, incomparable. 
One of the greatest size differentials that we will see. Fred Yehai will give up a tremendous amount of height and reach to Hikaleo. He was a great collegiate wrestler, but Fred Yehai always fought athletes that were almost the same weight as him. Now, as a veteran professional wrestler, he's dealt with size differentials before, but how will he navigate the difficult waters that will plot the course here against Hikaleo? Let's see what Fred Yehai can do. Oh, uh, correction, and Kevin. An, an, yeah? It's Yehai. Come. All right, we should do this together. Come on, here we go. Three, two, one. Yehai. <laughs> Now, here's a fun fact, Kevin. He was actually part of Team Filthy in MLW, another version of Team Filthy at one point. And if Tom Lawler sees something in you, you know you're something special. And he actually has a win over Rocky Romero on Ring of Honor. So the man knows how to get it done in the ring. But can he get it done against a guy I don't know if I can even call him a guy, but a giant, a monster, a violent monster that is Hikaleo. All right, so Fred Yehai one-on-one against Hikaleo as we are counting down to resurgence. And, you know, the fans that hold tickets for this special event at the L.A. At the Torch at the L.A. Coliseum, they have just a, a rare treat. They're going to get to see the first... New Japan Pro Wrestling event in the U.S. live in 18 months. But for everyone else around the world, you could participate and you could see it live on pay-per-view, Fight TV, and we'll talk about the two matches that make up our double main event here during this contest if we get an opportunity. Fred Yehai thrown down. Hikaleo just you're the one smiling confidently at Yehai. Oh, look at Yehai. Fighting back. Not afraid of the big man. Fred Yehai firing those shots at will. Hikaleo absorbing them. I love so, of course, the double... Hey, uh, Alex, the double main event with uh, Jay White defending the never open way championship against David Finley. You, obviously, being the Bullet Club aficionado, you, I'm sure, are firmly in the camp of uh, King Switch. Kevin, I am, I'm so pumped, and let me just correct you. I'm not a Bullet Club aficionado, per se. I'm just an aficionado of talent. And when you look at a guy like Jay White, he was created in God's image. If you just look at him, this is what God probably looked like. Six little separations on his abdominals. I mean, the, 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 the kind of talent that he has is incredible. I am so pumped to see that match. Yeah, we'll see what happens with the Never Open Way Championship on the line. David Finley got the last singles victory over Switchblade Jay White. Hikaleo starting to dismantle Fred Yehai. And, of course, the second half of our double main event, the U.S. heavyweight title. Oh, wait a minute. Hikaleo, a bit of a misfire there. Oh, look, he, and now finds himself in some submission difficulty. He's got the legs wrapped around the neck, cranking the neck backwards. A very effective maneuver here. And if look at that. Hikuleo is on his knees. And Frehai is putting the work on the big man. Very confident in his own skills. And Hikuleo, of course, very familiar with the U.S. champion Lance Archer. A recent title defense for the new U.S. champ on AEW Dynamite. Hikaleo nearly unseated Archer from the crown, but Lance Archer victorious over Hikaleo now comes to resurgence, Alex, and will defend the title against Hiroshi Tanahashi in the United States. My, he is going to be at Resurgence Live. Well, if... I, I urge all the fans to tune in to Fight TV tomorrow at Resurgence because obviously Tanahashi is a legend. He's been a staple in this business for so long, and he steps foot on U.S. soil for the first time in a long time when he faces off against Lance Archer. And, Kevin, how quickly do things change in this business? How wild is it? Mox has held the title for so long, and it's Lance Archer with the U.S. IWGP heavyweight title now. 
Yeah, again, it's a, you know, it's been a crazy situation as Yehi is trying to get Hikaleo off his feet. The only time Yehi has been offensive, been effectively offensive uh, to Hikaleo was when Hikaleo was down. So we'll see the double main event tomorrow night at Resurgence, live on pay-per-view as Hikaleo follows in. Fight TV, the place to be tomorrow night for Resurgence Live from the torch at the LA Coliseum. Yehi rolling away to the corner. Great awareness by Yehi to roll out of that because a suplex from a man that's six foot eight is no ordinary suplex. Follows in again and delivers the clothesline. Speaking of the US title, the former champion John Moxley will team with a mystery partner. Hikaleo to the cover, one, two, and a kick out. They'll tangle with the Good Brothers, fresh off a return to New Japan for the first time in five and a half years at Tag Team Turbulence, it all goes down tomorrow night. Kevin, I mean, uh, this is like a birthday. I mean, the summer is truly hot and sizzling because Talk and Choppa Mania invades tomorrow at Resurgence. I am so pumped. They can leave that Talk and Choppa Mania nonsense at home. Hey, I hope they bring the goods, man. Kevin, th th those are the best goods in the business. Rear chin lock applied by Hikaleo, and this is not the position that Fred Yehi wanted to be in. The big monster Hikaleo Five laying all of his left. weight down. Five minutes. And uh, another matchup I'm looking forward to seeing tomorrow night as well. Carl Fredericks one-on-one -on -one against Alex Coughlin. We'll see Carl Fredericks in our main event, teaming with Leo Rush against Danny Limelight and a strong open weight champion, Filthy Tom Lawler. Resurgence is going to be special. And the best way to see it is live on Fight TV. And you can order that now as soon as we're done here on Strong. Don't wait, though, folks, because I got a feeling a lot of folks are going to be signing up for that pay-per-view event. And you don't want to miss a second of the action for Resurgence. And uh, for the last five minutes, Freddie Yehai has been desperately attempting to gain the upper hand. But... Unsuccessful with uh, Hikuleo here. This is a tough, tough matchup for Yehai. Ooh, hard chopping. Yehai is very strong. He's, he's very explosive, but man, he's really having a tough time. Yehai slung corner to corner. Well, there is nothing subtle about Hikuleo at all. He'll take his time. And he'll seem very, very cool and confident. But when he fires, man, it is all systems go. And the same for Yehi, your point, Alex. He doesn't get cheated on any of his strikes, but they're having very little effect on Hikaleo. Well, Fre Fre Yehi is going to have to be real careful of the tongue and driller that sit down Death Valley Bomb Slam. Able to wiggle out and now mounting a succession of attacks. Wheel it in some Mongolian chops Beautiful. and now. Bicycle kicks, holding the arms of Hikaleo while kicking the chest of Hikaleo. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I love about Fred Yehai. His style, it's a new age style. He, he's just a hybrid wrestler, new generation, and very effective. Catching here the foot of Hikaleo and stomping on that foot. Look at that. Now trying to sweep the leg, easier said than done. Got it. But Hikaleo still standing. Wow. Takes him over with the German suplex. And now Fred Yehi on top. Two and a kick out. And that just German suplexing a big man like that is probably going to take a toll on you and take some energy away from you. And he's locking on that submission again. Cranking on that neck. Pulling with his legs backwards. Hikaleo and is Hikaleo, just... oh, he's trying to find an escape. He's trying to find an escape, but Yehi is in between Hikaleo and the ropes. Now transitioning to the head scissors. Got to wear the big man down. Dropping the elbows on the forehead of Hikaleo while scissoring his head. And a couple shots here on the... Look at that. 
whacking his own leg to drive that into Hikaleo. Strikes that Yehai normally fells an opponent with have just brushed off of Hikaleo. Yehai's had to hit him three, four, five times to get the effect of one normal shot. So Yehai having to work extremely hard here on offense. Yeah, he has to work real hard for everything he's able to execute. Oh, his horse caught. Power slam. Center of the ring. This could do it. But Yehai is able to kick out. Still very impressive what Yehai has been able to do. You can see. Oh. <laughs> Lights out with that boot. See the handprints of Fred Yehai blistering the chest of Hikaleo. But it could be Tonga Driller time. Let's see. Yehai still fighting back, trying to create distance by putting his palm on the throat of Hikaleo. But Hikaleo is picking him up for it, and he got it. That's it. Time, 9 minutes and 31 seconds. Here is your winner, Hikuleo. Man, Hikaleo looks rough, even though he was victorious. Fred Yehai scored with a lot of shots. Hikaleo was able to absorb them and inevitably put Fred Yehai win, uh, away for the win. Man. I mean, he took some damage. I mean, you can see it on his chest. Fred Yehai was no easy opponent. Now, the size differential just too much for Fred Yehai to overcome. And Hikaleo gets the victory over Fred Yehai, our tag team main event. Coming up in just a little bit, folks, with uh, the strong open weight champion, Filthy Tom Lawler, teaming with Danny Lima. Wait, Hikaleo is uh, calling for the microphone here. This is unexpected. What does Hikaleo have to say? That's what you said. That's what you said, New Japan. A midget Fred Rosser. I beat his ass too. That's the second Fred I beat. <laughs> Give me someone worthy. Give me someone good. This is too easy. Oh, wait a second. You ask. And you receive. That was quick. Hikaleo wanting, Hikaleo wanting more competition. And Juice Robinson apparently going to answer the call of Hikaleo. The juice is in the house. The most flamboyant, the combination of Duke the Dumpster Dosi and Shawn Michaels, the most charismatic and flamboyant individual on New Japan Strong. Correct me if I'm wrong, but did I hear your big eight-foot ass whining about the lack of competition here on Strong? Huh? Is it a challenge you want, sweet boy? Well, look no further, because here's 220 pounds of challenge right in front of your baby giraffe child-bearing hip ass. Let's go. Yeah, all right, so I'll make it easy for everybody. Everybody, New Japan, he wants competition. Hikaleu wants competition. Well, I didn't come here for a tea party, all right? I'm here because I want competition, too. So sign it up right now. Make the match. I don't care when. He don't care when. We'll do it. Hikuleu versus Juice Robinson. Right here in America. Right here in a new Japan pro wrestling ring. Kevin, well... Let's do this at Resurgence. Let's do this tomorrow. Let's put these two at Resurgence. I want to call this live. Well, wouldn't that be something? So Hikaleo wanting more competition. Juice Robinson more than ready to answer the call. He called him a baby giraffe. You called him Duke the Dumpster Drozzy and Shawn Michaels. It's a compliment. He's super flamboyant and a charismatic. And it's 220 pounds of challenge. I want to see this tomorrow. So please. All right, we'll see what it, we'll see what happens.
so so sore, 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 so so sore. Shop Global. We ship worldwide. Why, buddy? You finished those Okada orders yet? Yeah, with the new Team Filthy shirt, Papi. Genius. Eso, mi gente. The stars of today and the legends of the past come together on your smartphone. NJPW Collection. Pick up cards from special draft events. Use your collected cards to form your own faction or exchange them for limited edition special cards. Check in live from venues or remotely from home to get special tickets and items. Add all of New Japan Pro Wrestling to your collection now. NJPW Collection. お待たせしました本日のメインイベント30分一本勝負を行います This is our main event here on the road to summer struggle This is the final match before resurgence is live at the torch of the LA Coliseum Tomorrow night is going to be an incredible event fans Oh look at the、yes. goals That is our strong open weight champion, a man that has truly earned it. I mean, the man ha had to beat Hikuleo and Brody King in the finals of that tournament. And he's been successful in defending it. Most recently, you know, I mean, Carl Fredericks challenged him for it as well. Yeah, defeated Satoshi Kojima. Everybody's given their best shot to filthy Tom Lawler. No one has been able to beat the champ as of yet. And of course, as we saw last week, Alex, filthy Tom Lawler adding to the ranks of Team Filthy with the West Coast Wrecking Crew telling Royce Isaacs and Jarrell Nelson, I've got spots. And I'm impressed with you guys. The handshake, the deal was made, and the West Coast Wrecking Crew now a part of Team Filthy. I mean, I, I believe now more than ever, Team Filthy can become one of the strongest factions of New Japan Pro Wrestling, even giving Bullet Club a run for their money. I mean, they were strong as they were, and now with, the, with West Coast Wrecking Crew joining them, My God. It seems like a lot of people here on New Japan Strong are picking sides. Team Filthy growing. Mysterioso joining Bateman and Barrett Brown. And now let's see what Leo Rush and the Alpha Wolf Carl Fredericks can do. Of course, Leo Rush, one of the You know, one of the most successful and decorated junior heavyweights in the world. And Carl Fredericks, you know, the run that he's had, the first to graduate out of the bunch of young lines here training under Shibata, has had a lot of success. So much so that he challenged Tom Lawler for the open weight title, but unsu unsuccessfully, of course, because Tom Lawler is no match for anyone. Well, certainly Tom Lawler is going to have to be on his guard here in this tag team main event because if either Carl Fredericks or Leo Rush can pin the shoulders or submit filthy Tom Lawler, 
They would be first in line for a ne for an open weight. They would be first in line for a strong open weight championship match. Hey, wait a minute, Whoa. wait a minute. Carl Fredericks attacking Tom Lawler and Daniel Limelight from behind, and Tom Lawler hasn't even had the opportunity to remove his signature denim clothing. Well, Lawler finding himself in a fight right off the bat as Fredericks starts oh. fast, but Lawler's, oh. Dragged him back into that corner. Carl Fredericks making this opportunity count, singling out the strong open weight champion, Filthy Tom Lawler. Well, I mean, the, the way that he started this match, he attacked Team Filthy from behind, maybe because that's the only way that he can gain the upper hand. But if he gains the upper hand and beats the champ, he gets the title opportunity nevertheless. He already had his chance and he was unsuccessful. So maybe he should move on. Leo Rush taking care of Danny Limelight on the outside. This leaves Fredericks and Lawler in the ring. And Lawler is on the receiving end right now. He probably can't fully be mobilized here because he's got his denim shirt on. Oh, Going wait, forward to Manifest Destiny. Manifest Destiny almost. Oh, and look at Tom Lawler attempting the front face lock there. Oh! Spinebuster! Spinebuster! Almost! Almost! My God. I gotta say, Carl Fredericks not wasting any time. Folks, Resurgence live on Fight TV tomorrow night. Double main event. The Never Open Weight Champion. Switchblade, Jay White defends against David Finley, the IWGP US Heavyweight Championship on the line. Champion Lance Archer against the ace, Hiroshi Tanahashi. Great tag team moves here by both Leo Rush, who's now the legal man and almost beats the champ. Well, this was, this is what's going on right now is a two versus one situation. And Tom Lawler hasn't even removed his beautiful denim jacket. Well, you know, maybe oh. Lawler needs better help than Danny Slimelight. Hey, hey, you should really be careful. Choose your words wisely when you're talking about a Marine Corps veteran, a drill instructor who's traveled around the world. Well, Leo who's... Rush just drilled filthy Tom Lawler and now tags in Carl Fredericks. So the champ is on the receiving end of a two-headed monster right now. Leo Rush and Carl Fredericks both targeting the strong open weight champion. Shot from behind from Limelight. Fredericks misses with the boot, and he might live to regret that mistake. There we go. And this is how it should have started in the very beginning of Carl Fredericks then act in such a shady way by attacking them from behind. Where's the sportsmanship? Show some respect to the champion. Now you're gonna pay, Carl Fredericks. Now you're gonna pay. Looking to turn Fredericks over in the single leg, Boston Crab, but Fredericks trying to fight out all oh, the DDT. And Fredericks in deep trouble getting to the ropes. That will force the break. Jeremy Marcus calling for the break. And Lawler lets go of the hold. It was one of the reasons why the West Coast Wrecking Crew joined up with Team Filthy. Royce Isaac said, hey, he's the champ, when Jarrell Nelson said, are you sure? So all you need to know is that Tom Lawler rules the roost here on Strong. He's the man. But, he's got, a huge, but he's got a huge target on his back because everyone, and I mean everyone, is a potential title challenger. Here's a cover. Barely a one count. I mean, it's an open weight championship. Anybody from any weight class can challenge him. But he's certainly the man to do it. And that, yes, there is a hierarchy here. You should show respect to the number one guy. If you want to be part of Team Filthy, you should know your place. That is what happened with Chris Dickinson. He didn't know his place, and that is why he's out, and that is why the hitman, Daniel Limelight, had to hit him in the yaitza. Yeah, right in the yaitza. As Limelight working on the knee of Carl Fredericks. Fredericks extended that boot, tried to drive Limelight off the apron, got hung up in the top rope. Lawler lowered the boom, and now Team Filthy is going to work. A dragon screw leg whip. And 
Carl Fredericks is in deep trouble, and there is nothing worse than having one of body part severely compromised with filthy Tom Lawler, because he can clamp on any kind of submission to that leg that he wants, Alex, and it will be lights out. Absolutely, and look, I mean, he's not only a lethal fighter, but he's very Five smart. You saw the Five way that minutes. he got in between Carl Fredericks and Leah Rush to prevent Carl Fredericks from making that tag. Conor McGregor has got nothing on Tom Lawler. Tom Lawler now, he's taking a lot of punishment as well, clamping the cravat on, driving the knees, the side of the head of Carl Fredericks. Fredericks would love one more opportunity at the strong open weight championship, but he'll have to beat Tom Lawler here in order to get it. And now... Oh, look at that. Look at the way he's got his leg trapped. He's got his own leg in between Carl Fredericks, pulling on it, using his own shin there to apply more pressure, locking in that second leg, making it that much more difficult for Carl Fredericks to get to the rope. Carl Fredericks fighting with everything he's got here. And Fredericks now facing a deeper dilemma and Lawler positioning him, setting him for perhaps a figure four. Carl Fredericks fighting with everything he's got, with every ounce of energy he's got. And like you said, Tom Lawler can apply any which submission oh, that. on that leg. He turned it around, he switched positions, and is able to effectively apply that figure four. The only best friend for Carl Fredericks here in this match is not Leo Rush, it's the ropes. So there was a tag, and now Danny Limelight will come in. Obviously, filthy Tom Lawler, his gas tank was running low. He took a lot of punishment right at the start, and needed to get the fresh man in to continue the pressure. So while Lawler gets a breather, you see the difficulty that Carl Fredericks has just standing. And now just a few seconds on the apron and Lawler will tag back in. Trying to bait Leo Rush into a mistake. And the teamwork there from Team Filthy. Hit him high, hit him low, down goes Fredericks and this could do it to Leo Rush makes the save. Well, if it wasn't for the ropes and for the save of Leo Rush, this match would have been over a long time ago. You know, this match should have been restarted in the first place. That is not how you begin a match. Before the bell rang, Carl Fredericks attacked him filthy from behind. Uh, now, and now he's paying for it. So Fredericks is on his feet, driving closer. Front face lock by Lawler, which is a submission hold. Fredericks crimping his chin down. Firing some shots in the midsection. He's trying to free himself. Leo Rush reaching out for the tag. And those kicks might not look very vicious, but those catholics are nothing to joke around with. Carl Fredericks somehow able to catch Tom Lawler in that suplex. Will that be enough? for him to make his way to make that tag. If it isn't enough and he can't make the tag, I have to believe this match will be over. But it looks like Fredericks will get there, and he does the tag to Leo Rush. Waller able to tag out as well. And so now Leo Rush tearing in to Danny Limelight. Look how swift, how quick, how elusive Leo Rush is. Reverse Rush. Oh, down goes Waller. Waller knocked off the edge of the ring. And Leo That's Rush. That's not good. Lope driving Lawler into the barricade. Lawler is not even the, the legal man. Why would you, Leo Rush, waste your energy on somebody that's not even in the same ring? And now Leo Rush and Carl Fredericks will work. You see Fredericks hobbling, but fighting through the pain as Rush knocks him down with the clothesline. Here's the cover, two, and Tom Lawler, he'll make the save. Get rid of him, he's illegal. Get rid of him, he's illegal. I'm just doing my Kozlov impression.
Wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh oh. Not, not so fast, Leo Rush. Take that. Leo Rush thrown down by Tom Lawler. Danny Limelight still the legal man. Wait a minute. Fredericks pulls Lawler out of the ring. Smashing the strong open weight champion on the Ten floor. Minutes has elapsed. Ten minutes. And we've certainly seen so much action in these last 10 minutes. Rush going to Leo the top Rush going here. To the top. Yeah, watch out. Watch out for Lawler. He gets knocked down. Leo Rush again, this time putting the strong champion down. Here we go. Frog splash, nobody home. Oh, my goodness. Dropping Leo Rush on his knees from that powerbomb position. One, two, and he kicks out. How in the world was he able to kick out of that? That was a mean, vicious, back-breaking maneuver. Well, a man of the hour with enough toughness and heart to kick out. But now, Filthy Tom Lawler is in a two-on-one chance here for Team Filthy. And after that German suplex, you can ring the bell. Two, wait a minute. Carl Fredericks dives into the pile and breaks up a certain pin. Fredericks is like a man possessed on filthy Tom Lawler here in this main event. Fredericks is the one who fires first to the midsection. And there goes Lawler and Fredericks over the top and all the way to the floor. And now it's between Daniel Limelight and Leo Rush. What a battle this Trading tag shots. team main event has been. Rush creates some distance and now fires. Swing and a miss. Oh, he missed with a spinning back fist. And that bicycle kick to the top of the head of Daniel Limelight. Looking for rush hour. No. Lands on his feet. Wait a minute. There we go. Rush hour. Where's Lawler? Break up that pin. Two. No. Oh, Fredericks took care of filthy Tom Lawler on the, well, on the floor. 18 seconds. Here are your winners. The team of Carl Fredericks and Leo Rush. And Leo Rush has defeated Danny Limelight, so a win over Team Filthy. But certainly the target for both Rush and Carl Fredericks was the strong openweight champion. Once again, your winners of the match, the team of Carl Fredericks and Leo Rush. I, I certainly don't like the result of this match. I can't even say that it's a, a fair win. Resurgence live tomorrow night from the torch at the LA Coliseum. See it all live on Fight TV. Double main event. Switchblade Jay White defends the never open weight title against David Finley. The US title on the line. New champ Lance Archer against the ace Hiroshi Tanahashi. Plus Carl Fredericks takes on Alex Coughlin and more. All the stars will be there. Alex and I will be on the call and we can't wait to bring it to you. Resurgence is gonna be awesome, folks, and we'll see you all tomorrow night live on Pay-Per-View. Fredericks and Rush are your winners in the main event. There's two, three, four, five hundred uh -huh. times, hundred pins, Danny Limelight. Yeah. Get out of here, kid. Filthy Tom Lawler champ. It's a matter of time, my friend. It's a matter of time, speaking of time. Man of the hour, first time ever. Plugging anyone here against Team Filthy and his money. I Filthy am the man of the hour. Look at the way that I move. Look at me. Look at me! I told you that I am the goddamn truth. Filthy, Tom, Lawler, 
what just happened to damn the lime light is just a preview of what your future is gonna be. Whether it's me, whether it's my main man right here, you better hold on tight to that strong title because it's not gonna be in the hands of your filthy hands any longer. Alexander James. You did good against the young boy, you did good. You wanna come after the LA dojo? You wanna come after me? You wanna call me out? I'm the king of this dojo, I'm the king of this show. You think you're real? You think you can hang? You know how many people I've seen that look and talk just like you come through that dojo, try to take my job, try to take my brother's jobs, earn a spot here? You sound just like those guys. If you think you're real, you think you're one of us, f around and find out. This is my show. Come on down. He's Joe.